All right, here we have the cosine rule. You've already got uh, your expertise in the sine rule. We're going to have a look at what happens with the cosine rule. So, first of all, we are looking at being able to find missing sides. Now, the cosine rule looks like this. It looks a little bit complicated, but don't worry about it too much. You get it on your formula sheet, and I'll show you exactly how to use it. So say we have a triangle like this. Now before where you were working things out using the sine rule, you were all sorted. We can't do that on this one because we don't have the right pairs. So for example, we've got the A and the A there. We want to work out X so we lo label that with lowercase a and its opposite angle is capital A. But we, have a, we run into problems when we try and do a matching pair that the B and the B we don't have an angle for and the C we don't have an angle for so we can't match it up with a, um, a sine rule pairing so we use the cosine rule instead okay so start off with what A is and substitute into that formula so in this case A is X that we're looking for equals right B is 10 so put in 10 squared C is 9 so we get 9 squared minus 2 times 10 times oops I missed a bit hold on there we go that's better 2 times 10 times 9 because the 10 and the 9 are your B and C multiplied by cos of angle A so that's cos 27 All right and if you pop that into your calculator you get x squared equals 20.62 of course keep that answer in your calculator when you then go on to do the next step we want to square root it to find out what x is and that's 4.54 Whatever you do, don't retype in the 20.62. Make sure you're using that answer function on your calculator to recall the whole of your answer so you don't lose any accuracy. Okay, and using it to find angles. So if we start off with that rule that we just saw, we can rearrange it to, to find the angle part of it. That cos A is the bit to do with the angle. So if we bring the 2BC cos A over to the left-hand side, and take that a squared over to the right hand side, this is what it looks like. And then we want the cos a on its own, so divide through by 2bc, and it looks like this. So this is the form of that formula that we want to use if we're looking for an angle, and again that will be given to you on a formula sheet. So let's see it in practice. Here's an example. We can't use it how it was before, because this time we're looking for an angle, so we use the new form of our um, cosine rule which looks like this. All right, label up the sides, A's with A's. And we've got a side B and a side C. We don't need to label the angles B and C because um, they're not important to what we need at the moment. It doesn't matter which label you um, give B and C to, you can put them the other way around and it'll still work just as fine. Okay, so substituting into our formula, we have um, a is x, obviously, that's the thing we're looking for. So cos x is equal to b is 10, c is 9, a is 8, so 2 times b times c on the bottom. Work out what that is, so cos x is now equal to 0 0.65 to two decimal places. Once again, leave that answer in your calculator and recall it using your answer button um, that's above the equals. So now x will be the inverse cos of that 0 0.65, which you'll call up from your answer function. Which gives us the final answer of 49.5 degrees to one decimal place.